Hi, I'm Rich and I'm with Cindy. We're on Legacy at 2atc.com. In this video, I'll show you how I make AT5 satellite charts for my SimRed chart plotters using what I've called, been calling the stitch method. I'll mostly follow the PDF instructions that you could download from our website. The first step is to download the map tiles. We'll use SAS Planet for that. In another video, I'll demonstrate the use of other tools to download other maps. In SAS Planet, we need to find the best image source and the best zoom level. Go to the area you're interested in and try different sources and different zooms. Look around the entire area to make sure the images are free of clouds and you have good visibility into the water. Here there's some reflection on the water, but you can still see pretty good details. This is my favorite source, Esri ArcGIS imagery. Let's see what other sources look like. There are really only two I commonly use in SAS Planet, Esri and Bing. For now, let's try Bing. You can see that it's pretty hazy, but it's still kind of usable. I haven't been able to get Google stuff to work with SAS Planet, but I'll show you an easier way to download Google Images. Let's go ahead and make this with Esri ArcGIS imagery. Zoom out so you can see the entire area you want. Let me go back and check the PDF and make sure I'm following my own instructions. We found the best image source. We found the best zoom level. I always try to get zoom level 18, but it's not always the best. Sometimes 17 is better even though it has less resolution. You might find that it's more complete or even uh, has less clouds than level 18. So go to Operations, Selection Manager and choose. we'll choose Polygonal Selection. Zoom out so you can see the entire area you want and just start clicking until you have the entire area surrounded. Click, click, just like this. When I'm done, I'm going to find the elusive check mark and click it. This little box can be pretty much anywhere on the screen. After you hit the green check mark, the selection manager window will come up and I'll select the zoom level I want, in this case 18. I'll make sure that I'm on the download tab and click start. This could take a while. Since I previously downloaded this area, it was really fast. We can verify that we have all the tiles. Go to view, select cache map tiles in the level you're interested in, in this case 18. The download tiles will be darker. Let's check the PDF instructions again. We've downloaded the map tiles, now let's create a stitched map. We go back to Selection Manager and select Last Selection. And then go to the Stitch tab and select where we want to save the image. I'll make a new folder called Stitch Demo. Open that and name the image. I'll just call it Stitch Demo again. And click Save. Now we'll select the zoom level, 18 in this case. And we want to make sure our source is what we want. And check the KML box so it makes the geodata file. You can change the quality to 100 if you want. I doubt if it makes much difference. And then Start. It won't take very long for a small chart like this. Larger charts can take a while. So let's take a look at what we've made. In our output folder we have two files, a JPEG image and a KML geographic data file. We can take a look at the JPEG if we want. At this point we could also edit it in a program like Photoshop to enhance the image. Just make sure you don't change the image size or shape in any way. No scale, rotate, or image size changes. That would make the chart inaccurate but we can enhance the contrast and colors to bring out the details we're interested in. Let's go to the PDF for the next step. We made the big map. Now we're going to use Insight Map Creator to make the AT5 charts. Open Insight Map Creator and select View Processing Mode and then Keyhole Mode. This will create a JGW world file for us. Select the Add Files and pick the directory where we put the map we just created. Select the KML file and hit Build. This won't take very long, no matter how large the chart is. 
And now you can see that we have three files, including the JGW file we just made. The next step is to select View Processing Modes and Raster Mode. Then we're going to hit the Add Folders button and pick the folder we've been using. Choose that folder and set the minimum and maximum resolutions. I've been using 1 and 32 and I'm happy with the results with those settings. Now select a working file directory. I'll usually create one called working and put it in the same folder I've been using. Now there's only one more step before we make the charts. We go to Advanced Options, Atlas Options, and choose the Atlas version. I use 13 for my Simrad NSS EVO 3 chart plotters. You may need to use an older Atlas version for other chart plotters. And then we go to the Atlas Description. This is the name the chart plotter will display for the chart. Type capital M equals and the name of the chart. I'll name this one Stitch Demo and close the window. Now we're ready to build the chart. Hit the Build button and away we go. Depending on the area of the chart, this could take a long time. When I first started, I tried to render the whole south half of New Caledonia and it took three days to build. While it's building, let's take a look at what we're doing. If we open the working directory, we'll see that we're building the different resolutions. Here's 32, 16, and 8, and now it's building 4. As the resolution gets greater, it takes longer and longer to build. We've got 360 files in resolution 2. We'll have four times that in level 1, so about 1,500 files. In this little demo, it'll take around 8 minutes to process. I'll skip ahead so as not to bore you. There we go. Process is complete. We're done. We can close Insight Map Creator. We don't need to save the changes. And now in our working folder, we have a folder called Bound AT5s. In that folder, all the AT5 files are there that the chart plotter needs. In the PDF, I'll show you the directory structure I use on my SD card. I make a folder in the root of the SD card called Shaded Relief. Then I make individual directories in that folder for each area I've made. In those folders, I put the AT5 files. There are directions in the PDF for selecting and viewing uh, the chart on the chart plotter. I'll run through it on my chart plotter. Yours may differ a little. But before I do, I just want to point out a little section in the PDF about chart accuracy. OK, here's a screen recording of my chart plotter. I've actually used the GoFree Wireless and recorded the screen on my tablet. In the chart menu, I'm going to select Chart Options, then Chart Source, and then scroll down until we see our new chart. There it is, Stitch Demo. And voila, nothing. There's one more thing we need to do. Go back to Chart Options, View, and Photo Overlay, and change it from Off to Full. And now our chart displays. That is, if we're displaying an area that includes our chart. Even in this simple, hastily prepared demo, you can see the value of having satellite charts on your chart plotter. Look at that balmy. See any sign of it on Navionics? I don't. It's pretty clear on the satellite image. Let's zoom and scroll around and look at some other details. Even in the area with the reflection, you can see pretty good underwater details. The images are even better on the chart plotter, better than they are on my tablet here through the GoFree Wireless. And in this uh, less than clear water in the bay, you can see the underwater structure really well. It's even better on the chart plotter. OK, that's it for the lesson. Now try it yourselves. Remember, it's all in the PDF at tuitc.com. Thanks for watching and happy boating.